Hello, dear friend. This is 40 days, 40 nights with the Promise Consoler. And today is day or night 37. And we are here live with you. We are here for you at Kardec Radio, Facebook Live, and also Kardec Radio, Kardec Radio, the online radio, the web radio for you, which also has a an app. Uh-huh. Yes, we have an app. And you can listen to us 24-7. Okay? And our 24-7 radio is a 24-7 Spiritist radio that talks Spiritism 24-7. Did you know about it? Yes. 24-7. And today we are talking about Lesson in Jerusalem, chapter 17 from the book Lázaro Rede Vivo. We are here truly reverent for probably sometimes we talk so much about Jesus, his coming, and we talk about his sacrifice, the passion, that sometimes we wonder how much people are desensitized to this very to this very, very um, um, reality, I would say it's a reality, right? We're just double checking our system here. And it's a reality here for all of us that we can't lose sight. And we really need to make sure that we are not desensitized. You know, desensitization is a term, scientific term that we use quite often in the neuroscience of pain, the field of pain, studying pain in the human body. And we talk about desensitization when you stop your threshold of perception for certain things change, okay? So sometimes, because you're so used to that stimulus, you don't feel as much as you used before. And it's not a problem of the stimulus, but it's the brain beautifully adapted to it. It's no longer news, which is beautiful. But the problem is when Jesus' ultimate sacrifice becomes no news for us, then we're missing the good news. Because in order to feed the good news, part of it, needs to be new. So we need to recycle our old ideas and open to the new because we will only know when we get to that ultimate level of understanding when we become divine letters of God, when we're really walking side by side with the Master. We're not following Him anymore. We're side by side with him. So that's the measure. We can't allow the message to become outdated. Old news. Good news are always new. And they are always bringing us joy and excitement. And we need to ask ourselves whether or not we are really boosting. Don't allow your heart to be desensitized by this message. Many Christians have done that around the world to the point that when you talk to them about Jesus, they're like, ah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. No, 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 we don't know. That's why we need to talk about it. Because these messages that were brought in by Umberto de Campos are brand new. Mm -hmm. So new that we're surprised every night. Every night we're surprised with the take of unprecedented reports. The reporter of the Beyond, Humberto de Campos, bring to us unique angles of the very stories we thought we knew, and then we've come to know that we didn't know that much. Ready to be surprised and collect the beautiful piece of the good news today and rejoice. Feel the scripture, shall we? Shall we? So let us say hi to the beautiful community before we begin, hello Katya, and thank you Katya for
for your donation to um, the book drive for South Africa. We're, we're receiving donations, books, it's beautiful, and the campaign is just at the very beginning because we're going to go through it for months until the anniversary of Kardec Radio on July 4th. And then we wrap it up. Take pictures of the, the amount of book we got and we're going to send it to our group uh, in South Africa, okay? Lea Severo, how are you? Anna Dilson, how are you? Constance, how are you? Cessa, Sunshine, Valeria, how are you? Eric and Danny, how are you too? All of you, kiss to Valeria, kiss to Sunshine, kiss to Cessa, kiss to Constance, Adilson, Lea Severo, Katia, and, and, and I haven't missed Angelita. How are you, Fernando Oliveira? How are you? Thank you for asking, Fernando. If you go to cardiacradio.com or here on the Facebook a Cardiac Radio, we have a photo showing this. Let me show it to you. Probably it's gonna be helpful. I can show it to you here. Take a look. Take a look. It says here, okay, we you can donate to our PO box and the books, and we have the address right there, or you can make a donation, a money donation, and that money is going to be 100% converted to the books that will be sent there. Nothing stays with Kardec Radio, The Spirit Side of Virginia, Spiritist Magazine, nothing, everything. Okay, Fernando, thank you for asking. And Solange, how are you? Thank you, Katia. Seeking the good. Shall we seek the good? Yeah? But be ready to be surprised, right? After all, the good news need to surprise us, need to surprise us and bring new joy, new hope, new courage. They're all, those are the trademarks of the spiritist spirit. And I can see here our dear friends. Um, okay, one sec, I'm sharing. Magdala França, Rosângela Maria, and other friends that I cannot see now, but even if you're watching us on demand, we give you a kiss and a hug and a welcoming, warm welcoming, but also make sure that you send us your questions and your requests, okay? Ana from Alabama, I got your email, I'm gonna reply to you, okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, Rudy. Ready, friend? When Rudy comes in, we're ready. Okay. And we go. Lesson in Jerusalem. Very significant is the glorious entrance in Jerusalem, according to the information provided by the gospel text. The city had known Jesus since his first visit to the temple. And many people, while he was there, hurried to hear his preaching. The Jewish people longed for someone with enough authority to free them from the oppressors. Me too, right? Was it not time for Israel's redemption? The chosen race suffered severe humiliations. The proud Roman pressed Palestine in tyrannical arms. For this reason, Jesus symbolized the renewal, the promise. Who had brought wonders like he did? No prophet had ever reached such culminations. 
the resurrection of Lazarus, Lazarus, who was bandaged in the tomb with evident signs of decomposition. That resurrection astonished the most illustrious descendants of Abraham. Not even Moses, the unforgettable legislator, had achieved such a realization. And in those days of traditional celebration, the people prepared to pay tribute to him as tradition. They would receive the prophet in different ways. They would show to Caesar's precepts that Jerusalem did not renounce the purposes of liberation, eager for autonomy. Now, more than ever before, it had a political figure up to the events. Certainly, Jesus would not attend to the impositions of the priests and would not submit to bribery in the face of the golden promises of the imperial rulers. Stop. Stop. Yeah, the story is not over. But let us observe. Therapeutic conversation. This is very personal. It seems like a historical uh, telling. No, no, no. It's personal to you and I. Many people are like this today. They're looking for a superhero that is going to be incarnated and save us from the hands of evil. No. Forget about it. That's not how it works. People thought that Jesus was, was going to be Superman. He was actually Superman. But he was not going to do what people expected. Okay? And I say Superman figuratively speaking because of the greatness of his um, deeds and feelings and report and everything. But how many of us are like this? And I tell you, even in the spiritist movement, people are like this. Expecting that, you know, one day in the United States, a super spiritist is going to come and rock the ground. But people don't notice, my friends. It's noticed after a long while. Look at Divaldo Franco. Divaldo Franco just turned, is turning 90 years of age. 70 years of speaking commitment. You think people saw the missionary from day one? No. I remember more than a decade ago when he was coming to Baltimore for a conference. And I remember in Brazil, people who didn't appreciate him as much trying to slander him big time using the Brazilian TV Globo. I remember that day. And we were like, impossible. He was 78 or 79 at the time. And we were like, impossible because his life is a true service. And yet, like the true followers of Jesus, they'll be persecuted, right? But the other thing is this. Jesus, as our guide and model, did not attend to the impositions of the priests. Remember, we need to contextualize to understand it all, okay? Let me say hi to my dear, my dear Ira. Hello, Ira. Tia Abby, hello. Ana Paula, welcome, welcome. Now, you're welcome. <laughs> right? We're welcome. Now, just to make it lighter, because this conversation is very deep to our core. And it's like abdominal, you know, crunches. Oh, mamma mia, abdominal crunches. Like, ah. Ah, uh, right, Isabella Silvestri. I read your name and I start singing. I wonder why, I wonder why. 
But I know why. Right? The voice, Isabella. <laughs> Now, seriously, huh? Jesus would not attend to the imposition of the priest. Let's recall. Jesus was a Jewish man belonging to the, 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 that culture. And the priests, the priests of the synagogue, you talk about God and you don't surrender to the impositions of the priests. Ah, thank you, Guy de Mond. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Why? Because we want to repeat the same mistake today. Uh huh. Yes, we want to make the same mistake that we've done for many lives. And Jesus said 2,000 years ago, don't go there. Respect, but if there are impositions that are not correct, don't do it. Who is the authority for you? A religious figure, a political figure, a work-related figure, or God? Jesus would say, alternative D, God. Which one did you mark? Which one? Mm -hmm. we need to be very careful because there are many people around the world who blindly they're not only blind in their faith regarding their religious beliefs but also regarding their political ways of understanding their work related issues sometimes in their school in their workplaces we see things going wrong And people are afraid and they are afraid of saying things, talking about things, because what are people going to think? You know, that's how it is. Somebody needs to help change the order of things. And if that's you, inspire yourself in Jesus and go. Second thing, he would not submit himself to bribery in the face of the golden promises of the imperial rulers. So if, if for financial reasons, are you, are you, are you, and I say you, meaning me too, any of us, are we at any point giving up on moral values, ethical moral values, because we need to accomplish certain financial goals? Can I give an example? There are some people who dress in a particular dress up in a particular way in their workplace to impress. They don't sleep with the boss. They don't sleep with a colleague. But they play the game. Hmm? That's a form of bribery. It is that you're accepting, that I may be accepted. No, I don't do that. But we need to think. How about spirit centers? Do you behave differently if you talk to a man or to a woman? Or you see them equally? After all, we know a spirit doesn't have sex. I mean, There has no gender difference, man or woman. It's the body. So if I talk in a certain way with somebody like, oh, because it's a man. Or, yeah, you know, because it's a woman and I'm a woman. Then, what am I doing? Jesus was the coherent master. And he taught us to clearly be observant of how we can fulfill God's will and not people's will. We're not here to 
please people like yesterday one of our friends in our Facebook uh, live asked this very important question how much right we need to please people shouldn't we please not to hurt people and Jesus was he in any way in any way pleasing people no he was being kind to people being kind is one thing pleasing is another being kind but he he was kind but saying no he was being sincere but he said no he said Peter you can't do this but he was kind he was not like yeah 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 and allowing the wrong to go on and on. He said, no, no, no. It can't be like this. Right? We're not here to please people. We're here to be kind to people. But if they want something that doesn't match our, the laws of God in our conscience, we still love them. We still appreciate them. And like one of the texts by Shakespeare, Love all, trust few, right? Love all and trust few. And what he meant all probably is that we, we should understand that people are differently. Uh, in the, they are different in their mindset, right? So we need to help everyone, but not necessarily be worried about manipulating them. Because that's not a good thing. Jesus was not a manipulator. That's why he didn't accept to be manipulated either. If you accept to be manipulated, very likely you are a manipulator. And I say you, meaning me, anyone. So I don't go there. I don't need to control anything. I let go of control. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. I don't want to control. I say sometimes you go home and you're anguished because things didn't go as expected. Do you feel that? I feel that sometimes. And then you're like, oh my gosh, what can I do? I should talk to this person. Talk. And then, you know, don't talk to anybody. Just talk to God. Say, God, you know what's happening. I'm not going to manipulate anything. Let me know what to do, okay? And help me sleep well because I cannot control people. And I'm learning to manage myself, right? Co-creator at minor level. Learning to co-create with wisdom, taking care of the physical asset, learning to live with health and harmony, mind, per spirit, spiritual and physical body. Hello, Julio. How are you, Julinho? As Divaldo says, Julinho. Sunshine, pleasing comes from fear, being kind from the heart. Right on, sunshine. Shining on us. Yes. You ready for the continuation? I think we are. In view of that, because Jesus didn't attend to the impositions of the priests and didn't submit himself to the bribery of the golden promises, the master, when he left Bethany on the way to the city, Jerusalem, many people lined up to greet him festively. Festively. Elderly men, picture, 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 just like a movie. Elderly men with gray beards, followed by the choir of the young, and they were saying, Hosanna to the son of David. The women shouted enthusiastically, holding little children that gracefully held green palm branches. How did you, would you feel? Ecstatic? Like, whoa, yay, people got it. He's the king. That's how many people thought. You think Jesus bought it? No, because he knows us. Thank you, Julio. <laughs> Thank you. Love from Brazil to all of us, friends. Thank you. Thank you. We need love because all we need is love. All 
we need is love. Love. Right? Now, surrounding the master, the disciples felt the ephemeral jubilation provoked by the false incense of the crowd brought unexpectedly to the summit of popularity the faithful galileans bowed faintly faintly intoxicated with the triumph many people dream about fame they don't know what they're asking they don't know don't ask don't ask enjoy your anonymity for some because for others you're the center of their lives right the loved ones so rejoice but when we're not ready it can be hard from time to time these are that men patriarchs made signs to peter philip and john inviting them to speak discreetly. Can you imagine the pressure of people on them? The pressure. When will the Messiah manifest himself? And they assumed an attitude of proud prudence and answered almost always the same thing. We are sure that today's tribute is decisive and that the Messiah will show us the plan of our demands. Can you imagine? How many people, even in spiritism, we gather together, do things like this, and people come like, but where are the Americans? Where are they? And I'm like, uh, aren't we speaking English? No, but where are they? Where are they? No, no, but we need a plan. What is the plan? What can we do? Say, friend, when you walk with Jesus, there is no plan because the plan is God's plan, not ours. What do we do? We work. And how do we work? Attending people one on one. And if there is a second order, they're going to let us know. We don't need to be anguished, anxious. Just let it be. Let it be. Lose the anxieties. Allow it to flush away. Okay. Let it be, let it be, and work hard where you are. Don't be any anguished, because the plan is of God. It's not yours, it's not mine, it's no one's, it's Jesus Christ. Let us embrace the grace, let it be, dun, dun, dun. but let us hear the people. Ta -ta -ta, ta -ta -ta, in the ears of the people and what did Jesus do Jesus was grateful he thanked the demonstrators in Jerusalem with his eyes but with melancholic smiles he thanked with his eyes he didn't wave like a king no he thanked he was not taking for granted. He was not looking down on people. But he had a melancholic smile because he knew what we would need to go through. What he would also need to go through to teach us the ultimate lesson. And he was like, picture the melancholic smiles probably to date he's still melancholically smiling to majority of the followers of the gospel on the earth the question is is that is he also melancholically smiling to us because I bet that to Chico Xavier he was like joyfully smiling I'm just giving Chico Xavier as an example. But he can joyfully smile to you, and he may have done it when you donated the books to the <laughs> to South Africa group. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Yes. When you helped your family, 
when you gave up your needs for the needs of others, when you recorded your prayer to help the United States Spiritist Federation on April 18th for the National Day of Prayer, National Day of Spiritism. Yes, recorded. Yeah, accents, people love accents, right? It doesn't matter, what matters is the message. And it's a 24 hour servicing prayer, you can join in. What a beautiful, and I'm saying you, you, no, no, not the other one, you, you, you. No, Vanessa, but I'm in Brazil, I'm Julio. Yes, you, Julio. Yes, you, Sunshine in California. Yes, you, Isabella Silvestre. Yes, you, Ana Paula. Yes, you, Ira, if you want. Tia Abby, if you want. Rudy, Fernando, Solange, Katia, Angelita, Eric and Danny, Constance, Valéria Benfica, Seissa, Lé Severo, Adilson, why not? You, 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 mm -hmm. you, you. Magdala, França, Rosângela, and whomever else. You do it, Leia. Joyful smile to you. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just teasing you guys. Who am I to even simulate the smile of the master? But we can picture it. He's our guide and model. He's our personal trainer. He's coaching us. I love my coach. Do you? I love him. And demonstrating to understand the situation, Jesus immediately summoned his disciples to a more, a closer meeting where he would say something serious, grave. Interpolated by some friends, James and John, the brothers, sons of Zebedee, reported on the master's announcement. They would discuss the issues of the present and the future and possibly would clear the political definitions of renewal action. For that reason, while the Christ and the companions made the frugal meal at the cenacle, a true multitude crowded discreetly in the neighborhood. The people were between anxious and hopeful, awaiting information from the Apostolic College. When the meeting was finished, Jesus and Simon Peter lingered in a more intimate conversation, like in confidence, while six disciples mm, cautiously approached the public. Their physiognomy denounced worries and disenchantment. You see, even the disciples they were eluded, right? And they went to the meeting thinking that Jesus was going to declare something political. Mamma mia, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But this is the blind spot we have in us. We're always hoping for that external surprise element. Ta-da! No, 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 no. Mother Mary, the blessed mother, we heard yesterday. She was surrendering completely, but she had that hope inside that one day, one moment, God was gonna come and save Jesus from. And we learned with her that didn't happen. And it's not gonna happen in your life or my life. If you're waiting for a miracle, like something that is gonna come in miraculously, change the course of events it can only happen if it comes from within you from within my heart to me your heart to you where is the super person inside of you right yes we are the children of god right thank you anna you 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 yes and Fernando, we're friends. <laughs> Laete Fernandes, you're from Brazil, but you're beyond the nationality. There's no nationality for us spiritists. There is only one 
one unity. We're immortal spirits. Reincarnating here and there and anywhere. And it doesn't matter where. Because we are children of God, as Isabella is saying. But now listen to the dialogue. The commentary is begun between the intellectuals of Jerusalem and the fishermen of Galilee. A patriarch, chief of the movement of curiosity. That's an interesting one. I hope I'm not a chief of the movement of curiosity. Okay? What did the prophet say, he asked. Did he explain after all? And Philip said with benevolence. The disciples are learning to reply with benevolence. Yes. What is the basis of our political and social restoration program? The Lord condemned that the greatest should be the servant of the least, and that we should all love one another. Then an old man with uh, lucid eyes asked, What about the sign of the movement? And the humble apostle Philip replied, It will be in the love and sacrifice of each one of us. So people always ask me, How is spiritism going to be widely spread in the world? Easy. The day we love and sacrifice our lives to do it. That's easy. Will Jesus address Caesar immediately in order to explain the needed protest? And he answered, He told us to trust in the Father and to believe in him also, our Master and Lord. And Lord. So you're expecting somebody to knock at the door of the White House and put things in order? It's not going to happen. What's going to happen? Our trust in God and in Jesus. And the patriarch was angry and he exclaimed, Then no demand will be made. Can you imagine? And Philip said, he, Jesus advised us to ask heaven for what we need. He's advising you and I ask God. He manifests that we'll be hid on his behalf. Philip said without disturbing himself. They looked at each other in wonder. And then the old man grunted. What about our position? Are we the chosen people on the earth? And very calmly, the apostle clarified. The master said that we are not of the world. And thus the world will annoy us until his kingdom is established. <laughs> Imagine if you come, you're hopeful, and somebody comes to you and say, you know, the world is not for us, and people are going to annoy us until we actually, on the earth, establish that true connection. The first laughs were heard, but the prophet continued, and then the Israelite was demanding it, said, but the prophet, did he sign any document did he not sign any document nor refer to any compromise with the authorities i know even spiritist friends who are upset because president obama did not release a law to make them legal immigrants and then i ask are we repeating the same mistake that we made two thousand years ago thinking that in exchange for service to others, God is going to grant us a political favor? We are expecting this. We need to read again all the books. We, we can't. And I say Obama because people had high hopes and it didn't happen. Why? Because the divine order is not in place like this. If you feel imprisoned like the Hebrews at Jesus' time, or feeling oppressed by the Romans, read Paul and Stephen, and then you'll be freer. Because Stephen learned 
how to be serving God in spite of the conditions. And yesterday, the slave of the Lord, blessed mother, she learned, and I have here the text. Mary, understanding, she then understood, she then understood in tears that the Almighty answered her, please, not according to her mother wishes, but according to the divine plans. Lord, he is your servant. Let it be to me according to your word. So the day we get to that level, it doesn't matter anymore. Whatever physical disposition. And Philip answered to the man, No. Sincerely, naively, he said, Jesus merely washed the feet of the, the disciples. Oh, says Humberto de Campos, it was too much for the vain sons of Jerusalem. Pause, friends. Are we still the vain sons of Jerusalem? Are we? We've got this far with the promised consoler, much more than they had. But are we repeating the same mistakes, hoping that Jesus is going to come and restore the order and oppress the oppressor? No, it's not going to happen. Sometimes we hope that in our families, regarding a family member that is oppressing us, and we are hoping that a, a ray of light comes and strike them in the head to see if they sh change their mind. It's not going to happen. We hope that our boss wakes up. It's not going to happen like this. We hope that our child wakes up. Mm -mm, we have to work hard on disciplining them. And friends neighbors, society. We can't hope for something that we haven't done ourselves. We hope we're not the vain sons of Jerusalem. Didn't I tell you, Jaffe? said an old Pharisee to the patriarch. This is all fake. After an obnoxious laugh, a, an arrogant boy securely said, this fisher's man, fisherman's adventure is a joke. In a few minutes, one could see the street completely deserted. The multitude abandoned them since that, and Jesus, since that very hour, when they realized that Jesus fulfilled, above all, the will of God far from any competition with men, recognizing that he despised all calculations of probable political triumph. The disciples also withdrew disappointed, and from that moment on the persecution of the Sanhedrin took shape, and the Messiah alone with his pain and his loyalty experienced prison, abandonment, just injustice, scourging irony, and crucifixion. This was one of his last lessons among humanity, letting us know that it is very easy to sing hosannas to God, but it's very difficult to fulfill the divine will with the sacrifice of ourselves. In your spirit is center, in your spirit is group, if that's your case. Are you fulfilling God's will or you're simply pleasing the people? Because often I see people who have high command from above, directors, presidents of center, saying, let's study this book, let's change the language of the center to the language of the country. And they say, but people are going to be upset. Sacrifice? They're going to be upset. Give them Jesus' address and say, go talk to Jesus. 
because Jesus is the one guiding us. And a good thermometer for us, am I doing right in life or not? Good one. Put a thermometer in the orders of your heart. If you're fulfilling God's will, you're going to see it's boiling. And it's boiling to the point that people who get close to you, they feel like boiling, either because they love it or because they hate it. If you put it in and it's like mild, you're singing hosannas to God and pleasing people. But the fulfillment of God's laws is far from being reached. What do you think? Singing or fulfilling. We can sing and fulfill here, 11 p.m. And on May 6, when you come to the symposium in Orlando, if you join us, Kardec Radio is going to have a station. And we're going to sing to in the rain. Hopefully it's not going to rain, but if it does, we have a shelter in a beautiful location where we're going to mingle together and dance in the rain of God's love. Because we're talking about reincarnation. Best lives is a good thing for you and for me. But the future is ahead, so let us sow to reap only happiness and joy. And I rejoice with you. I give you a hug and a kiss. Hoping that you're gonna sleep well. And if not, keep working, loving, and serving. Until tomorrow, God willing, day 38.